Hello. Today we have a mangled box on the bench. So I bought a truck from a guy that you probably know. He sent it in a different truck box. The box is broken. I hope the truck isn't broken. I want to be able to do that myself. Okay, let's get it out of here. I'm just going to go for it. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to my poor blum. That's a very sophisticated transmitter. Oh. I have to install it myself. Unbelievable. Wow, cool. It's a Trail Finder 2. Just kidding. It's a Trail Finder 3. Just kidding. I can hardly tell the difference. Okay, let's uh, inspect this all new Trail Finder 3. It has rubber tires, loose front wheel. Oh, look at that. They slightly improved on how to mount the body, but you still have big holes in the side of it. Plastic sliders. Uh, the same Mojave 2 body that they've had for over about 10 years. So it features just a dashboard, no seat, no interior. No front inner fenders, because they want to sell them to you later. From the outside, it looks like a Trail Finder 2. Bad girl. So in case you haven't figured it out, this truck belonged to Scale Builders Guild. He bought it, reviewed it, didn't like it, drove it once, and instead of throwing it away, I said, I'll take it off your hands. So then I bought it, and I'm gonna hate it, but I'm going to try to not hate it. Let's get the body off and see if there's anything different under there. Paint, is the body painted or is it molded in white? I think it's molded in white with a black painted bed liner. Okay, so I already have a problem. The tie rod has been stolen. That's okay because if it's the same one, they've put on Yoda two axles. It needs replaced anyways. They're terrible. They like have a bunch of bends in them already and then when you try using it, it just folds in half. Check this out. It's got a common 6BT in it. Pretty great. Uh, kind of an odd choice to put in a Toyota. No, I'm just kidding. This is supposed to be a 22R. It's huge. It's like a straight six. 
why is it so big? Like, why is it humongous? Why is it so big? And what it's missing parts? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna sell you exhaust manifolds and intake and you know weird. The gigantic motor and transmission are mounted to a new for RC four wheel drive steel C channel chassis that is wider in the rear and you know narrow in the front much like a Toyota mini truck it's pretty cool to see um, because it hasn't been done in a while maybe about 40 years ago by a little company called Tamiya when they came out with the Bruiser so they're finally now just catching up to a design that's older than I am so both the both the chassis are the same width at the rear but at the front the RC four-wheel drive is just a little wider however the OG has correct orientation of leaf spring hanger and shackle you should have a hanger at the front and your shackle at the rear of the front axle. They, for some reason, went with the forward mounted shackle. I don't know why they would do that after everybody told them it was wrong the first time on the Trail Finder 2. It's very confusing and frustrating. And then at the back, we have something really neat. Uh, instead of making Yoda two axles, like they made the original Bruiser Ruptor Yoda axle with the wide perches that you could put on a Bruiser, they went with the standard width and then inboarded the springs for just a really odd look. And, you know, obviously, obvious reason is so they didn't have to make a new part or perhaps they can sell you an upgrade later super bizarre I still like the original better and while we have this out let's look at the axles these are bruiser axles you know they're very basic in design but the overall shape is more realistic to a Toyota mini truck 8 inch axle you know these are like real kind of round it's like a hybrid between a Land Cruiser and truck axle and these are a little thinner you know they're both made out of cheese but I mean these have held up for a pretty long time so why not just make an axle that looks like it's supposed to. Why do you gotta like do a half step? And these are too wide for the body that they're made for. The wheels stick out too far. Wouldn't it be smarter to make them narrow so they fit under the truck and if you want more offset you can get your offset in wheels like in real life. The suspension is very stiff. It has one, two, two helper springs and a main leaf and I'm gonna assume there is a spring inside these shocks that can't hold oil that's an unnecessary amount of sp spring I'm I'm just looking for something nice to say um, they did this on the TF2 well this isn't something nice to say but they did this on the TF2 also the steering servo is on the opposite end of the driver's side. The steering wheel on the included dashboard is on the left-hand drive. All the steering is on the right-hand drive. And this time they upped the ante with, uh, you know, a big rod and a bell crank to make your steering more spongy. And we all know the more moving parts, the better. You know, it's engineering. Why did they do that? 
they designed the let's assume they designed the vehicle from scratch they had a new chassis why didn't they make it so the servo could go here you can put the speed control over here like what was stopping them so they have they have the the transfer case outputs you know those are on the passenger side but I think if they still wanted to use this goofy setup there's still room for it I'm gonna have to try to fix that and you can see it's got a two-speed transmission Uh, another cool feature is a receiver box that is not waterproof. So, you know, if you want to drive your truck at the bottom of a lake, you're going to have to waterproof it yourself. So one good thing is a much lower profile skid plate than previous attempts. They were more like land anchors. So this is a uh, smooth plastic uh, that shouldn't hang down too far. Yeah, that's pretty cool kind of radical uh, pinion angles on the drive shafts but I'm gonna take some springs out and lower it so it won't be as bad surprisingly these drive shafts they've lasted for me on some trucks but I'll probably upgrade to uh, metal I like the incision ones we do have U-bolts for a little scale realism on your not so scale scale axles. If you made it this far in the video, you're probably wondering why this guy's such a hater. Well, he's been disappointed. And it's been a long time coming. When the Trailfinder 2 came out, like what, 10 years ago? It was pretty cool. You know, it was a vast improvement over the Trailfinder 1. If you can remember that. That was sad. So for a few years Trailfinder 2 was cool, but there were some weird stuff that they needed to fix. <clears throat> the steering on the wrong side, um, the shackles in the front, you know, the ground clearance of the center cross member skid plate thing, which they did improve, but it's, it's a lot of the same old stuff. Weak axles with weak gears same body this kit is toyota-esque because there's a lot of stuff that should have been changed and hasn't similar to how toyota builds trucks these days it's a it's, it's a whatever uh and i i don't know if the trail finder 3 was a huge success for them i mean i can't really tell when people post on because when the body's on, it looks just like a Trailfinder 2, so I don't even know how many people have these because it looks the same. So before I run it, I have to put that tie rod on and I have to put the receiver in. I want to run it fully stock, stiff springs, no inner fenders, all that stuff. And then I want to upgrade from there. Gotta fix this. Gotta fix that. Maybe just get rid of all this? Oh yeah, and before I forget, they got that gigantic semi-engine in there and uh, the hood doesn't even open. Like, they wouldn't even... They wouldn't even spring for new molds for a new platform. So, if you want to show off that bad boy, you gotta cut it yourself. Hey, just for giggles, let's let's put this on here. Cool, man. Maybe I'll just build this up. Okay, we're gonna get this junk in working order, and we're gonna take it out to Smoggins Philly, and we'll see what it can do. Before we get out there and show the running footage, I was able to find a. An original piece here, kind of put together, some random stuff. But I wanted to show how much 
and a screw literally just fell out of somewhere. Where did that come from? Oh. I was showing how much slop there was in the steering and uh, a screw fell out. Could be a reason why there was so much. But I bet once I tighten this, we're still going to be pretty sloppy. And we're back to the workshop. Lost a mirror, driving like a buffoon. Uh, lost a little doohickey or two or three. That was already missing. The steering was stiff. It was noisy and creaky. I'm gonna get rid of all this extra business. See if I can fit a servo up here where it belongs. And we'll go from there. In conclusion, it's basically the same truck that they've been putting out for a while. In terms of stock performance, there's no difference 
It has a more realistic chassis than the Trailfinder 2. It has the same axles. It has a two-speed if you want that. Otherwise, it's basically a Trailfinder 2. I think I've run out of words to say, but thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.